Hello again. Had anybody announced when the Lord of the Rings films were being made a little over 20 years ago that a black comedian was to be cast as one of the Hobbits, it would have been regarded as an obvious joke. Yet, here we are. A generation later, and it would have been strange if some of the major roles in a series set in a legendary version of Western Europe had not included black people and Asians. Having Lenny Henry play a hobbit is just par for the course these days. As those making the new series for Amazon said, it is intended to reflect the world. This is odd, because after all, there were plenty of black people in the world 20 years ago, and yet nobody making films based on Tolkien's books at that time ever thought for a moment of having black elves or a black dwarf princess. Yes, the most important um, dwarf in the new series is, of course, a black woman. Now, I know that Tolkien's works are fantasies, but they are fantasies rooted in European folklore. Middle Earth is Europe, and if you lay a map of Middle Earth over a map of Europe, this becomes very clear. The Brandywine River is the um, English Channel, the Shire is in the English Midlands, and the Gulf of Loon is the Irish Sea. The conceit here is that plate tectonics have been at work since the time in which those stories are set, and that Mordor, for example, has sunk beneath the sea and would have been roughly where the Mediterranean is now. All the images in Lord of the Rings are taken from European mythology. The magic rings, the dragons, the elves and dwarfs say nothing of the very traditional wizard. This has everything to do with Europe and absolutely nothing whatever to do with Africa or the Caribbean. Other cultures have their own myth systems which invariably feature those of the same ethnicity as the ones who dreamed up the stories. In the Middle East, the Jews devised a complex set of legends to explain their own origins, and these feature only people who were native to the area – Hebrews, Egyptians, Hittites, and so on. In the same way, India has a rich tapestry of legends about men, gods, and supernatural beings. Look at some of the figures from Hindu mythology in the thumbnail um, – to this video. They are just as much a product of fantasy as the characters from Lord of the Rings. Well, it goes without saying, but can anybody imagine the Indians would make a film about the exploits of these imaginary people with a Jamaican playing a part of Krishna or a Nigerian woman playing Amber Mata? Of course not. Any more than a film about Noah's Ark would have a West Indian playing Noah. Noah and his Ark are a bit of fantasy from somebody else's culture, but there would be no need to start introducing Caribbeans or Nigerians into any dramatisation. It is only European cultural myths which are trashed in this way and erased. Of course it looks as stupid having West Indian elves as it would be to have Africans playing the part of Indian figures of legend, but one would never happen, and the other is compulsory. Some people wonder why the Russian Empire is still going strong and a force to be reckoned with, and that we in Britain have no will to stand up for our own past. Does anybody think that the Russians are at all ashamed or embarrassed about the Soviet Union or the Russian Empire? Does anybody believe that a Russian television production would find it necessary to insert a lot of black people into their past? It is not likely. That is why Russia is still a potent force in the world, but Western Europe is decadent and declining. No pride in our culture, history or heritage. <laughs>